This is Thursday, October 24th, 2013. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today David Baskin. Welcome, David. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? Again? <laughs> uh, December 31st, 1924. And where were you born? I was born in the Bronx, New York. Where do you currently live? I live in Holbrook, Mass now. Your marital status? Is married. And do you have children? Two children. Uh, I have Gerald mm -hmm. uh, and my son and Laurie, my daughter. And you want grandchildren? To Why know? not? Go ahead. Put throw them in. Uh, <laughs> Jerry has uh, uh, two grandchildren. Mm -hmm. He has uh, Rachel, who is ten, mm -hmm. and he has Charlie, who is six. And my daughter Laurie uh, has one daughter, uh, Abigail. We call her Abby, and she is twenty. Okay. What was life in New York growing up? It was good. I, mm -hmm. I didn't know any other kind of life, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoyed uh, going to school there. Mm -hmm. I went from, I don't know if I went to kindergarten. I don't mm -hmm. know if they had it then. But I was there mm -hmm. till the, um, I, in Brooklyn, I was there till the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And what did your parents do for a living? Well, my mother didn't work. Mm -hmm. My father was a foreman in a uh, leather factory. They made um, puttees, which the motorcycle riders would wear. And uh, then he, they changed also the boots mm -hmm. um, that was they mm -hmm. used in the service. Officers wore them. And for those who aren't familiar with puttees, those were like the extra wide pants, right? No, 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 no wrong. Puttees were the leather, um, it's hard to describe. They would go over your thighs. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, correction, your calves. Okay. On the calves part. All right. And uh -huh. I guess the police wore them, mm -hmm. and they were also worn in the service. And my understanding is you, your family moved to Massachusetts in 1938. Yes. And the reason was? Because the, uh, his, the firm that my father worked for bought a factory in Stoughton, Mass. Mm -hmm. And they want, he was a foreman there. They wanted him to come along with them. Mm -hmm. he, I think I took only two or three people from uh, New York with them and in turn, my father took me also, and the rest of the family. What did it feel like? I mean, you were a city boy, and now all of a sudden you're in a suburb of Boston. What was that like? It was a big change, but it was, it was enjoyable. Uh, uh, I met a lot of friends. I had a lot of friends there. And um, we, it was a really more than, more than a suburban area because about less than a mile away, uh, we had a pond, mm -hmm. Woods' Pond, and we used to go there, and we'd go fishing sometimes, catching frogs, going through the woods. Uh, I got to know flowers. I never had them in New York. Mm -hmm. And it was quite different, but it was interesting and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And I take you went to uh, Stoughton High School? Yes, I did. During the time you were in high school, were you aware of what was happening in Europe and Asia at that time? Oh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. In fact, um, when, uh, after Pearl Harbor, of course, then we went into the war, mm -hmm. and I, I remember distinctly about it. Half a dozen, half a dozen of us who lived in my, my street, and our, our area was called Toad Hill, and um, we were sitting around talking how, uh, it was, I think it was 19, uh, I think just before, well, right after the war started, when mm -hmm. we went in, uh, we were sitting around saying, 
how the war would be over, we'd never be get into it, which was quite wrong. Mm -hmm. While you were growing up in that period, do you remember uh, some of the uh, activities? Oh, did you ration? Did you have victory gardens? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, we had rationing then. In fact, I think I still have at home a book with the um, stamps, ration wow. stamps. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess it came hand, was left over and I, have, uh, I ended up with it. Mm -hmm. And as far as Victory Gardens, uh, my father went into planting too. Mm -hmm. So we were on over a half acre of land where we rented our house. And my father planted a garden and we had tomatoes there, mm -hmm. cucumbers, I'm trying to think what else. But it was good, I enjoyed it too, mm -hmm. helping out at the garden. Let's go back a little bit. Do you remember where, what you were doing when Pearl Harbor was attacked in December 1941? Um, yes, that, I think roughly that was the time I, I started to mention mm -hmm. how we were sitting around saying how, mm -hmm. you know, the Japanese will never, uh, ever get, get saved from this there and we won't have a chance to go into the war mm -hmm. to fight them because uh, we were that strong a country. Little mm -hmm. did we know. Right. Do you also remember like going to movies? And, oh, yes. Yeah? yes. Movies were great there. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the State Theater, which is still in Stoughton, but is, it's not a theater anymore, uh, but that was one of my favorite places to go to. Uh, that runs over from New York and the Bronx when every Saturday we'd have a matinee mm -hmm. at the Ritz Theater in the Bronx. And um, it was great. We used to go there 10 o'clock in the morning and get to see two movies, a serial, about two or three cartoons, and in between, halfway in between, they would have a drawing. You would save your ticket that you go in, and uh, you could win a prize. They had games and different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to just love going there. And I, you get a break too, by the way. You'd be there for about two hours, mm -hmm. then you could go home and have lunch, and then come back again. And that's what happened one time, was going home and coming back, uh, I lost my ticket. Oh dear. And they went and they called it. And I knew my number, I, I re, not rehearsed it, I, I memorized it. Mm -hmm. And I was so disappointed. Oh. One of the biggest disappointments <laughs> in, in my early life. <laughs> But uh, hey, that's what it was. But I used to love Saturday. They were great. Mm. And I, one last thing, I, I would go every Saturday and come home with a headache. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, every Saturday, with, without fail. Do you also remember uh, bond drives? Not too much. Not too much? No. Okay. I know my parents uh, bought some bonds, but... Um, I really don't re recall too much of it there. All right. What was um, high school like in those days? Well, I didn't go to high school in in um, the Bronx uh -huh. or oh. Brooklyn. I back went, in Stoughton. And back in Stoughton, yes. Mm -hmm. I went to this and came. We arrived in Stoughton and I was in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And so I was in the junior high for two years and then the Stoughton High. Mm -hmm. And it was very good. I had a great time there. Made a lot of friends. And uh, had some good teachers. And um, I was very comfortable mm -hmm. at high school. And you graduated. Yes. So now and we come to the point. <laughs> Where and when did you enter the military? Well. Um, we graduated 
from the State Theater in Stoughton, mm -hmm. the one I met, just mentioned. Yeah. And that was on June 24th, I believe, on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think less than a month, oh, not even a month, uh, most of us in my class, we were over 18, uh, we received notices to report for, not for duty, of course, but just mm -hmm. to be uh, taken into the service. And uh, so half of our class received these letters at that point. Uh, and at that point, too, we had some of our classmates who joined the service already. Mm -hmm. uh, they they heard about, not they heard, they knew about the war and they wanted to go in, and most of them went into the Navy. We had three or four who joined the Navy at that time. Uh, I think one of them went into the Marines. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anyone went into the Army. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's when we got our notices, mm -hmm. less than a month of after graduation. Okay. And what branch did you join? I joined the Army Engineers. I had taken an aptitude test, and they said I would be good at engineering. So, <laughs> that's what I went Army for. Army Engineers it was. <laughs> yep. Okay, you we just met, uh, did um, family or friends join the service when you did? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, a lot of my classmates. Oh, we had, uh, it's an interesting class. We had mm -hmm. graduates, 88 graduates, mm -hmm. and we had 44 uh, guys and 44 girls. And at that time, like I said, when I got my notice, uh, half of the class half of the fellows, anyway, uh, received these notices mm. to report for service, okay. to be inducted, I guess. Mm -hmm. Where were you sent for basic training? Uh, Fort Devens. And tell us what that was like. Um, well, it was interesting. Uh, uh, it was uh, just regular army, or we had to do hikes and exercises a lot. Um, hmm, what did we do there? Training, mm -hmm. rifle training too. Mm -hmm. And oh, I became a marksman also. Okay. Uh, I guess I got so many bullet holes in the, in the, in mm -hmm. the center of the target. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was my rating shooting, but and uh, just, I guess it was just ordinary drilling and training mm -hmm. there. Nothing as far as uh, engineering or being an engineer in the service. Mm -hmm. This was strictly, well, mm -hmm. basic training. Okay. Yeah. So after basic, tell us what happened then. Uh, at, after basic, um, we, we got a, a, a break. We were able to go home. And then I was re we had a re reassignments to according to what we wanted to do in the service. We had our choice. So uh, where I wanted to be an engineer, I was assigned to Fort Belvoir in uh, Virginia. And how do you spell that? B e l v o i r. Belvoir. I guess it's French. Beautiful. Must be beautiful view. I never even mm -hmm. thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> Belvoir, yeah. And where in Virginia is that? Oh, you had to ask me that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not too far from Washington, D.C. Oh, okay. Um, I was able to go to Washington, D.C. several times on mm -hmm. weekend leave, whatever, mm -hmm. after we were there for a while. Well, that must have been interesting in wartime. Yes, it was, mm -hmm. very much. And what did you do at Fort Belvoir? Well, that's where we had our engineering training. Mm -hmm. And the engineers in the Army are mostly construction. Mm -hmm. 
And there we did a lot. We learned about building uh, these bridges. I'm trying to rem I can't remember the name exactly, but they were all metal bridges that you would assemble, mm -hmm. and then they would naturally go across over a river or a stream mm -hmm. or wherever they were necessary. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was the main uh, training there at, mm -hmm. at Fort Belvoir. And how long did it last? Uh, we were there, let's see, we went in the fall, and we were there, I think, until the following February or, or no, about January or February the following okay, uh, year. So that would take us to early 1944? Uh, 44, right. Okay, yeah. good. Exactly. What happened then? Well, when we were through with our training, mm -hmm. uh, they shipped us to uh, Camp Reynolds in New Jersey, was it New Jersey? Yes. Uh, for, to go overseas. Mm -hmm. And we were there in Camp Reynolds a short period of time. And uh, then we went to New York, the city, and we got on a sister ship to the Lusitania. Mm -hmm. How about that? I, I can't remember the name of it, but it was an English ship. And we went over to, uh, we ended up in uh, Scotland mm -hmm. is where it landed. Yeah, how long did it take you to go to Scotland? I'd say about seven or eight days at least. And what, do you remember what the journey was like? Oh, uh, it was nothing special really. Mm -hmm. We were stacked up in, I think, four or five, um, not beds, but... Uh, bunks. Bunks, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you. And um, nothing, nothing really spectacular, mm -hmm. special. We well, were safe. Mm -hmm. I believe we were escorted to... Okay. Um, and uh, so after about, like I said, about seven or eight days, Okay. We landed in Scotland. And do you remember where in Scotland you landed? Mm, you had to ask that question. Mm -hmm. No, I don't okay. exactly. It was right. one of the ports, but I, I naturally would be a port. Okay, we'll settle for Scotland and take yeah. it from there. Oh, good. All right, so you're in Scotland. Yep. And you, I believe, I'm assuming this would be your first trip to Europe. Exactly, yes. So it was. What was it like? Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I was kept behind for a week or more in Scotland, helping unload um, equipment and various items from the ship. And I found that interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were able to get to Glasgow mm -hmm. uh, for a day or two, I believe, uh, which was nice, uh, you know, Excuse something mm -hmm. that we read about mm -hmm. in school. And, and um, so, we, like I said, we were there about a week or between a week to 10 days. And then we went to, I ended up going to Wales, England and Wales. And mm -hmm. want me to continue? Go or? right ahead. Well, okay. At that point, um, they were preparing for the invasion of, of Europe. And in Wales, there was the training for the, we didn't have this myself, but there was training for the, um, the boats that would carry mm -hmm. the troops over in the invasion of mm -hmm. uh, Europe. So we were mostly in England, we were very close uh, adjoining to each other uh, from England to Wales. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what we were train, uh, training there for okay. to, on the landing. Were you training with other American troops or Americans American and troops. Just no All English? Ameri no, no, okay. no English troops. 
And it was strange that in Wales at that time, um, there was a fella who I knew was over there, I was told, from my sister, who he was, a, I don't know if he was married then yet, to one of her girlfriends. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got to meet him there, Frank Adams. Mm -hmm. which was a nice thing. But, yeah. but anyway, that's what we had there, training to in the landings. Mm -hmm. And how long were you uh, doing the training? Oh, I'd say at least a month or more. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think of how, how long we were there. Did you have a chance to visit the countryside? A little bit, yes. Okay. Yeah. It was nice. Uh, getting around there. Not too much, of course, but some. And um, we, my, my company, uh, at the time of the invasion, mm -hmm. uh, we were kept back because uh, the company was over strength. Uh, they expected a lot of casualties, naturally, because mm -hmm. we, my company, as part of the uh, Fifth Amphibious Brigade, um, landed on Omaha Beach, and there was quite a bit of casualties. Mm -hmm. But my company was very fortunate. Uh, I believe we had only one killed. One one killed, mm -hmm. I believe, that died, and there were several wounded, but very very light. So we were held back for over a month. Mm -hmm. And on, I think it was on D plus 30, uh, July 4th or 5th or 6th, uh, we landed in, uh, in Normandy on Omaha Beach. Even though it was a month after the invasion, I'm sure there must have been, there must have been a sight. What was it like? Must have been a what? A, a sight. A sight? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when we got there, um, we uh, were dropped off in those, I, I, why can't I think of the name of those boats? Uh, landing have, transport? The LSTs, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because uh, they're using them now in, in Boston, the, mm -hmm. the ducks, they call mm -hmm. them. The duck yeah. boats, yes. Yeah. Um, so we landed right on the shore. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have to walk through the wa water or anything, how the original uh, invasion troops did. And um, it was quite calm, mm -hmm. except for nights. Um, but uh, my company, like I said, we landed on the beach, and we stayed on the beach. Uh, mm -hmm. We end, ended up unloading munitions and supplies. Everything came through us uh, on the beach over in Omaha. Mm -hmm. And it's Normandy, really, but it was Omaha Beach, and mm -hmm. each section had a different name. Mm -hmm. the, the British were there right next to us. And um, so that was our job at that point. Uh, you mentioned that it was quite calm except for the nights. What was happening at night? Uh, at night, the German planes would come over and try and bomb us. But they had up these barrage balloons, which protected us pretty well. But still, uh, on nights, uh, you would have the shooting you'd, always there. When mm -hmm. they come, they'd still come over all the time. Uh, they couldn't get low enough to drop bombs on us, but uh, you'd hear the, the anti-aircraft fire all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was it, nights and days when we just worked there. Mm -hmm. They had platforms, and I'll explain it a little better, okay, uh, what ahead. we did. The, uh, the ducks would come to the shore on one side of a platform, mm -hmm and unload their whatever supplies, equipment, 
armament, and on the other side, the truck drivers would come. And as we unloaded the ducks on one side, the, uh, we also loaded up the trucks, which would take the supplies and armament and distribute them where they were needed. Mm -hmm. So we were constantly doing that. How long were you doing that? Oh, we were doing that for about oh, four, five, six months maybe, something like that. That's a lot of armament and supplies. Yep. Well, the food came through. Yeah. Uh, clothing, whatever. Uh-huh. Whatever was needed. They were unloaded. Mm -hmm. That came from the Liberty ships. The ducks would unload them and then bring them to shore. And we'd unload the ducks mm -hmm. and then load up the trucks. Now, during this time, were you able to follow uh, the war? A little bit. Mm -hmm. we, we'd get some news. Uh, we would know how the troops were advancing. Uh, I don't recall now how we knew. We had no newspapers. Mm -hmm. But apparently, uh, through, well, through the officers, we would mm -hmm. get that information that the war was going good. Okay. And were you able to receive uh, letters from your family? And were you able to send letters to your family? Yes, we were, yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an APO address, Army mm -hmm. Post Office. And um, I wasn't that much of a good writer, but I did, mm -hmm. did write because I knew they would be concerned. Mm -hmm. And I used to get letters. Uh, I, I still have some of them from my little, from my little sister. Oh, dear. Um, she used to write to me and my big sister. And uh, I think I, they saved the ones that I wrote. Not mm -hmm. too many, but I did, I did write. Okay. And, and what was your rank at the time? Uh, at that time, I was a, still a private. Okay. And still with the engineers? Still with the engineers, yeah. So after four to six months of loading and unloading supplies on Omaha Beach, tell us what happened next. Uh, well, um, when the fighting really went away from the area, way, way, and once or twice, I think I was able to get into Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually after that though, um, where did we go? I'm trying to remember now. Mm -hmm. We didn't go right back to England, mm -hmm. but uh, we did after a while, and where we had few, so few casualties in my company, mm -hmm. uh, we were surplus, and we were transferred into, back to England, and uh, then I was transferred to an Army Quartermaster Corps, a company, I should say. And I learned how to drive a semi-trailer tractor. Semi-tractor trailer, whatever. That was, that was my driving trailer. experience. <laughs> okay. And that's where I got a license to drive. Mm -hmm. Go figure that. But, um, and uh, so in England, um, I traveled all over. Mm -hmm. It was like having my own car, except that I was tr uh, dropping supplies off from various places, picking them up, dropping them off all over England. And again, the, the supplies would be like, what, food, clothing? Yes, yeah. and all that kind of uh -huh. material. Where were you based? Um, in England, mm -hmm. we were based sort of out of Southampton. Of course, that was one of the ports 
where the uh, supply that would be arrive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so we had, uh, I don't know how many trucks they had, these big tractor trailers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got assignments from there and he'd have to go to various places, Bristol, mm -hmm. uh, Coventry, uh, London, all, all over England. I, I got to know quite a few places. So this is takes takes us for, uh, to like late forty four, early forty five. Uh, I'd say about then, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, war's drawing to a close, and what was happening? Uh, well, we still, I was still in the quartermaster corps afterwards. Mm -hmm. I, I I wasn't transferred back at all to the engineers, and um, it was. Uh, Quite, uh, I liked it really. I got to see a lot of England. Mm -hmm. I had my own vehicle. Uh, not that I could go out and just go out on a date somewhere and drive it, but still it was nice getting around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it was for business, you could say. Right. And um, I met a lot of nice people and families. Mm -hmm. There was a great family in Southampton, which I got friendly with, and um, that was very nice too. Very fortunate. Do you remember when the war ended? Sure. Tell us about that. Well, it was an exciting day, of course, mm -hmm. exciting period. Uh, that we finally won. All we were getting were reports of, of what was going on mm -hmm. in France and in Germany. Actually, France was all completely freed by then, mm -hmm. and the fighting went into Germany. And it was also in Italy, too, there was forces there. Uh, but Italy, I think they conquered pretty easily. But in Germany is when they finally uh, finished the war up. And um, it was exciting and, and fortunate there. Like I said, and especially in being in the Quartermaster Corps, there was no activity, no fighting at, at all. Mm -hmm. And so none of my uh, mates there were ever killed or injured. Very and lucky very, indeed. Very lucky, yes. Uh, So, um, and then afterwards, depending on how many, uh, uh, not years, how many months or, or years in the service, uh, people were starting to get discharged. Mm -hmm. And I got discharged in February of 1946. And where, oh, where were you discharged? From Fort Devens, too. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, how did you get back from England to America? Um, from England, mm -hmm. we were, got on a boat also. Mm -hmm. um, this was uh, a Navy boat, I believe. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an English liner anymore. And uh, I don't remember the name of it. I don't think it had a name. They always had a number, right. most of them. And uh, so we came back and we landed. Uh, we landed in, in Boston, I believe. And we were driven up to Fort Devens for discharge. And um, we was discharged up there in Fort Devens. Mm -hmm. Took the train back to Boston, and took the boat, not the boat, the, the bus, <laughs> mm -hmm. down to Holbrook, uh, Holbrook, pardon me, Stoughton. Stoughton. <laughs> Stoughton. Um, and there, I don't know if my folks didn't know I was coming home right then. Mm -hmm. So I walked from Stoughton Square to Toad Hill in Stoughton. Mm -hmm. And 
That was the end of my service. Wow. Uh, what rank were you? PFC I finally made. PFC you finally yep. made. I really gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually should have been a corporal. Mm -hmm. But um, what happened on one day when I was supposed to go uh, out to another camp mm -hmm. and pick up items, I didn't go out by 9 or 10 o'clock and they checked the vehicles there, and they saw mine was still in the parking lot. So I didn't get to be a corporal on account of that. Imagine that. I would have gotten now another 10 or $15 a month oh, well. <laughs> for being a corporal. <laughs> OK, so after the war, tell us what happened. Well, after the war, um, came home in February, and Got to see all my buddies from high school, and it was great. And of course, under the GI Bill, mm -hmm. we were all offered the opportunity of going to college. And I took advantage of that, and I went to Suffolk University. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, to be truthful, I doubt if I would have gone to college uh, if uh, without the GI Bill, because that was a big factor. Mm -hmm. um, no tuition, books were paid for, paid for. And um, so like I said, I ended up at Suffolk University and I started there in, I think it was September of that year, 46. And I went summers so I was able to graduate in 49, in three years I did it. And what was your degree? Uh, in accounting. I have a Bachelor of Science in Accounting. And um, mm -hmm. it's good. I was, um, was I married by then? I think, or I was getting, going to be married mm -hmm. after the graduation. Yeah, 46. I, I graduated in 1949, mm -hmm. and I was married in 47 or 48. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Should know. Um, and um, that was it. Uh -huh. Well, you had a degree in accounting, so I yes. take it you became an accountant. Yes. Uh, I became an accountant. Uh, I, I worked at several firms mm -hmm. uh, during school. I did bookkeeping in some. And then for two years after graduation, there weren't many good paying accounting jobs. And I went to work for the post office. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, I did get a, an accounting position. And I got a couple of them, and I worked for one company uh, I was referred to. I worked for them. It's the Standard Plumbing Supply Company in Boston. I worked for them for 11 years, I, 10 or 11 years. And at that point, uh, I decided to go on my own, mm -hmm. which I did. And I opened my own practice. And solicited various companies, got it clients, and I was in doing accounting and, uh, and income tax returns up until uh, this past September. Really? I just retired. Just retired, wow. September 30th. What are you doing these days? Uh, cleaning my office up, <laughs> <laughs> sorting. I have to keep uh, records still. Yeah. Uh, I have to keep them tax returns and supporting mm -hmm. records for at least three years. Mm -hmm. So I'm d diluting and thinning uh -huh. the, the uh, records that I do have. Okay. After, did you join any uh, service organizations such as the Legion of EFW? Um, not really. I, I, the, um, 
I was welcomed, not welcomed, I was invited to join the VFW and the JWV, the Jewish War mm -hmm. Veterans. But I didn't, wasn't into that kind of activity that they were doing. Mm -hmm. So I really, uh, I really wasn't that much of a member there in either one. And the Legion, the same thing, or the AMVETS. Uh -huh. uh, but I was active in different things. Um, after being in business for a while, uh, one of my clients happened to go to, uh, she became very ill. She was over at the New England Sinai Hospital in Stoughton. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to go visit her. And from visiting her, uh, I got to know a lot of the patients there, a lot of the staff. And uh, I ended up, I was going to be a volunteer there, but I had to commit myself to so many days or a week or mm -hmm. whatever. So I became uh, a member of the New England Sinai Hospital Men's Associates. And we were like a support group for the hospital. Uh, we would raise funds uh, for patient activities and various things for the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, funds and for activities and for equipment. And um, the organization I was with, uh, we supplied quite a bit of equipment for the hospital. Mm. And I became a director of patient entertainment, which means I used to book all the entertainment. Okay. Uh -huh. And we had monthly entertainers come in there, mm -hmm. just up until the last two or three years, mm -hmm. when the hospital was taken over by the Stewart Group mm -hmm. and became a for-profit hospital. Uh -huh. So that changed, and uh, I miss it. I miss it since then. But it was a great experience. Met some wonderful people there. Uh, the Sinai Hospital, they still have these patients who are paraplegics, quadriplegics, um, cancer patients, ALS patients, mm. the very difficult uh, uh, kind of patients that have, need special care. Mm -hmm. And I met some great people there, great patients, great staff. And uh, I still try to get over there mm. as much as I can. Okay. But, very, it's uh, yeah. very commendable. Well, I got pleasure out of it, too. I made so many good friends. Mm -hmm. I had one, one girlfriend, quadriplegic. She was unbelievable. She could do everything. She could do the phone. Uh, and you ask, how could she use a phone? Through her voice. Uh, she could answer it, uh, and uh, she did painting, drawing, and how could she do that without her hands, with her mouth? Mm. Uh, I, I have some great paintings still from her and from another patient there who was just terrific. Mm -hmm. And um, that brings me up to date, I guess, yeah. nearly, I hope. Okay, uh -huh. well, David, uh, how important was it for you to serve in the military? Um, very important, I felt. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, when we went through, I think this was at the Army base in Boston, we had our physicals, and because of my eyesight, I'm not wearing my glasses now, but I do, mm -hmm. uh, I was eligible to be deferred. Uh, I, was I was very poor eyesight. And um, they offered me, the, the doctor offered me a, a deferral. And I wouldn't take it. Uh, because here, half my class was going in the service at this mm -hmm. time. And I said, no, no I, I can't stay home. And, and be here and, and not going with the others. 
And yet you qualified to be a marksman. Yes. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> I was good. Had my glasses on. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. David, is there anything you'd like to uh, say? Uh, nothing really. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy this interview. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I can help whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what I would, but um, nothing really. Um, you've been very helpful and, and leading me on. And um, I hope I've given you all the information mm -hmm. about being my being in the service. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, like I said, I was very, very fortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't in any of the fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, and my company, we're very fortunate, the men in my company. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we had only one casualty on uh, Normandy. And uh, couldn't ask for much more. Mm. There were so many deaths, and uh, unfortunately, in in, the, in that period of time, mm -hmm. so I have no complaints. No okay. complaints. Well, David Baskin, we thank you so much for taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. You're welcome. Okay. My pleasure. My pleasure, indeed. Okay.